Good morning and welcome back to Outdoor Beards, where today we're going to be building my mom a garden bench. It'll be similar to this one that I'm sitting on. This is one I made for my wife a couple years ago. My mom's really liked it and she's been asking me for one for a while, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, in this video, we'll actually give you a cut list and walk you through how to put it together so you can build it yourself. It's pretty easy, pretty cheap, so let's get started. All you need to start this project is eight eight foot two by fours and one eight foot two by six. I said in the title that it's for under fifty dollars because altogether I spent thirty eight dollars on two bys, but I had stain left over from other projects and of course I have a mountain of screws. So this bench literally only cost me thirty eight dollars. For you, it might be a little bit more expensive if you have to buy stain and screws. Uh, lucky for me, I have a bunch of this stuff lying around. To start out, we're going to pre-cut all of our boards. This picture here shows you the cut list, so you can pause the video here and take notes if you wish. Each row is one 2x. So this row here came from one 2x4, and this row came from the next 2x4, and so on until you get to the very top. Uh, this top board here came from a 2x6. I planned this out ahead of time to minimize waste. If you're wondering how I planned this out, I use an app on my iPad called Shaper 3D. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but it's a great app for your design process if you like to design things ahead of time. Normally, I don't design things ahead of time. I'm kind of a figure-it-out-as-you-go type of guy. Um, but I have found this useful as I've been playing with it, and so I've been trying to design things ahead of time more often. Anyway, that's, that's not important for this video, because you're just here to learn how to build a bench and not to learn a CAD program. After we have all our cuts made, here's what our waste looks like. As you can see, I didn't waste very much at all. Uh, the 2x6 left over here in the front is not waste. I'll actually keep that for when I need a random chunk of 2x6 but everything underneath the saw here is scrap for the garbage. The next step is to sand all the pieces using 80 grit sandpaper. And this has a couple of purposes. Two bys have a tendency to have some serious splinters, so smoothing them out is a good idea. Some two bys have print on them, which is unsightly, so we're trying to sand that off. And lastly, it'll help make your stain more consistent uh, between the different boards. As you're going through and sanding these, uh, two of the boards are 22 and a half inches long. These will become the armrests, so I spent extra time sanding these. Also, I choose which cut edge will become the front, uh, where your hands will rest, and I'm going to use the sander to round off those edges to make it a little bit more comfortable for your hands. The next step is staining. I'm using a bare waterproofing stain and sealer. This particular color is called chocolate, and goes really well with the cushion my mom bought for this. I apply two coats with a brush. One of the reasons I like to pre-stain all my projects before I assemble them is to ensure I'm waterproofing every inch of wood, including the end grain, that you won't have access to after it's assembled. If you assemble the product first, then you can't stain the areas where the boards are touching. Moisture gets in there and it just deteriorates the wood faster. You can see here I have some sawhorses set up and a table. I'll stain one edge, then rotate the piece and stain the adjacent edge. By the time I've done this, all the boards that I started with are dry, so I can rotate them around and continue working on that board. Moving on to assembly, we're going to start with the seat frame. Grab two of the 52 inch boards and three of the 16 and a half inch boards. In the 6 and a half inch boards, we're going to drill pocket holes on both sides of all three boards and then screw our frame together. I'm using a pipe clamp to make this a little easier. If you don't have one of these, it's not a huge deal. You don't you don't have to have one, it does just make the process a little faster. After that we're going to install five of the 51 inch boards for our seat. It's really important for me that all the screws line up, uh, so I'm going to pre-drill and countersink all the holes. Grabbed a scrap piece of 2 by to use as a jig for drilling the holes, which ensures they're all in the same spots, and also kind of speeds up the process. When installing the seat boards, the gap between each board will be one half inch. I would suggest cutting a few scrap pieces that you can use as spacers, uh, but I didn't want to pull the saw back out, and so I kind of had to do it the hard way. Should have planned ahead a little better on that. Okay, next up will be our front legs and armrests. Your front legs will be the two 24 inch pieces, and the armrests are the two 22 and a half inch pieces. Drill pocket holes into one side of the legs and attach this so the arm has an overhang of one and a half inches. Remember we sanded the front of the armrest where the hand will be, so make sure that part is will end up facing forward. The pocket holes in the leg should face towards the back of the bench because we don't want those to be visible from the front. After connecting these, we're installing them to the seat frame. From the bottom of the leg to the bottom of the seat uh, is going to be 13 inches. 
Make sure this is squared before you install a couple screws through the front of the leg to attach it to the seat frame. For the back legs, which are your two 32 inch pieces, again measure 13 inches from the bottom of the leg to the bottom of the seat frame. Make sure this is square to the seat again and place two screws through the back of the leg into the seat frame. Measuring from the top of the leg to the top of the armrest should be six and a half inches. And put two screws through the back of the leg into the armrest to hold that in place. Onto the backrest, take all seven 19 inch pieces and drill two pocket holes in only one side of each of them. Grab your two by six and mark out the placement of the backboards. Each two by will be two and seven sixteenths inches apart. So I measured from one end, I marked three and a half inches, which is for the legs. Then I marked two and seven sixteenths from that, then three and a half, then two and seven sixteenths, and repeat all the way to the end of the board. Now I clamp my back pieces on based on those lines and screw them in place. Remember that the two outside positions will be taken up by the back legs, so don't install these in the two outside positions. To install the backrest section that we just built, we drill two pocket holes into the top of the back legs. Make sure this is on the back side of the back legs. Then set your 2x6 on top. Line up the edge of the 2x6 with the edge of the legs. Clamp it and screw it into place. Then do the same with the other side. To finish installing the backrest, I'm installing two screws through the bottom of the backrest pieces, attaching them to the seat frame. For the final step, I want to stain the pocket holes where the drill exposed bare wood. If you wanted to, you could stain some plugs and glue those in, but I don't really feel that this is an improvement over just staining the holes. But you do need to do one or the other to protect that exposed wood from moisture damage. And we're done! I hope you enjoy your new bench. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay bearded, my friends.